We're back out in the freezing cold garage where I can sort some of this mess. That stuff there. Uh, one of the major fuck ups I made was I forgot to fully TIG weld the radiator. <laughs> so yeah, all pissed out, all the water. Um, and I suppose we're going to fit this intercooler up there I made like years ago. Uh, a bits of checkered plating and stuff. Works a treat, flowed. 616 rear wheel horsepower and rotary which is going to be like 800 plus with a piston so that's going to be future proof eh? but we're going to keep the intercooler piping relatively small and short travelled and that will help with spool etc um, and response so yeah in this video we're going to be working on the intercooler first things first we're going to clean up this bench because yeah I always leave a messy bench before going to bed and then we're going to pull off this radiator, easy peasy, it's like two bolts and two bolts at the top uh, and then the pipe, there's like a pipe there and a pipe underneath here and this wee bee bee pipe there pull that off <laughs> and so they are so uh, yeah, you're going to have to bear with me on this one um, so I've obviously welded this pieces on here, this is the original one I have welded most of the way around until about here and I don't know why but I just didn't do the rest, so yeah. Um, radiator's off now, anyway. Big puddle on the floor, um, and yeah, what I'm gonna do is I made this back in the day, it was like a sort of a tester for testing pressure, pressure testing things. Um, I think I might make up a little rig to pressure test this. I should have done that from the first place, but sometimes. A good bit of rad weld can seal up a good. Uh, <laughs> I really, I, I mean, I mean, uh, joke. Uh, it works, works a treat. Uh, I always run them in the RX 7 z rad weld, so I've never had an issue. So yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up this wire wheel a little bit, uh, and then I'm going to set up the TIG for aluminium, and then we're going to start on this. This can be my practice piece because it's kind of underneath the car and uh, let's face it, not many people are going to see that. Then, as you can see, I did test this earlier on and I have got a leak right up in here. Uh, like right in there, it's a bit of a tricky bit to get to. So I'm going to take the angle grinder and cut all this out of the way. It's a bit of a shame because it's all sort of wrinkled. Mind you, it's not exactly the best job so nothing to be proud of there. Um, yeah, so first things first, get this way better. So, radiator back on, I started filling it up and I found two more leaks. This is before I've even pressurised the thing up. See it dripping? That's as tight as hell. Like, I've really, really, really lamped that up tight. <sighs> Next thing is this here. I've put a bit of tape on it temporarily just now to stop it soaking my floor, but here had a hole in it. So, um, it's a bit I've no touched. <laughs> so, yeah. That one down there, th that one uh, probably just needs a bit of Honda Bond. Uh, either a bit of Honda Bond or actual proper bolt in a washer. But I'm going to have to drain it down anyway because that's just going to flood this garage. But it looks like it's going to take a lot of coolant, which is always a good thing. What I've done now is I've ground down the inside piece so you can see the hole so that's gonna what I'm gonna have to fill up big hole so now what I'm doing is uh, I'm gonna cover up these old holes and um, they're three inch uh, what I used off the RX-7 
because uh, I'm using two and a half inch up there um, yeah it's not gonna look good so what I'll do is I'm gonna blank these off this bit of a scribe and then cut it out ten snips uh, and then weld them up oh, I thought I was almost stripping there I thought it looked like a face <laughs> with eyes and a mouth and a wee hat <laughs> metal I'm losing my mind right guys um, that's one cap done so move on to the next one now cut that out blank it up to the other side now I've just made this bracket here so I've got a vangle iron um, drilled two holes and I tapped the actual frame itself I did have a bit cut out here for the original lock which I'm not going to use these anymore uh, so this just adds to strength and not only that it'll actually add uh, become a bracket um, for the intercooler it has two um, sort of holes up here which are already threaded I'm going to see if I could do something with that what I've done now is I've stuck the bonnet on itself so I can see what sort of clearance I've got as you can see it's slightly lower than what it needs to be and like plenty of room for the intercooler to come up or even a bit and I'd keep everything happy um, as for the rest you know it's it's looking not bad so happy enough for that Keep tuned! <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. See a snorkel through there. Wonder if I can make like a scoop for the turbo intake of the boat bonnet. Nah, I'm not gonna go that chavy. But yeah, that's fine about the inner cooler. Um and I'll do the same for the piping to see make sure the none of the piping's gonna be resting against the bonnet. It's always something you forget about is putting the bonnet on, so I might actually end up with a different bonnet. I like the RE type, you know, it's like Looks like sort of heaps of vents and gills in it, so uh, I might change that out yet. We'll see, we'll see. Now I've just bent up some mounts out of some aluminium. Uh, they fit in the radiator holes because the radiator is upside down from normal. Uh, I'm just going to weld them on. I've done one sort of weld there. Uh, focus. And uh, I'll do another one through there. Just cooler is bolted down in place you can see the mounts there they sort of um, attach onto the radiator mounts themselves so it gives a nice spacing off the radiator as well and uh, I'll get ducked in to sort that so as you can see it's quite a tight bend here for intercooler to it so I'll do all pie cuts and um, that'll sort of look alright there and it's the same with this one as well come off the intercooler and towards there so overall it should be quite short piping uh, which will help with the uh, response that's what we're wanting but yeah this is going to take a while to weld up um, I hate doing pie cuts um, bit of a nightmare however it's another late night I've not got any sort of measuring thing to what angle I'm cutting it I'm just sort of eyeballing it <laughs> so yeah another night uh, I'm going to go in now for an early night and I'm going to come at it again tomorrow night maybe for a couple more hours. It'll be the same video um, but yeah I'll just uh, tackle at it and stay at it and stay with it. You okay, I'm saying? See you, I'll see you, see you tomorrow. Well I'll see you, you'll see me in about 30 seconds. It's now a different day, I feel refreshed, I've been topping myself up on the coffees uh, and I'm raring to go. So. Yeah, now's the time where I crack on with this, get this inner cooler piping done. Yeah, we're talking we're talking pie cuts here. Um bit of a shite mirror, however, you know, if you spend enough time on it, is this thing gonna is this thing ever gonna 
Or just shiny objects, is that what can not zoom in on? Anyway, that was cut by hand. I've got a heap cut there with that saw. I had to do it earlier because like it's so loud that I didn't want to totally piss off the neighbours at like 3 in the morning. So, why break a habit of a lifetime, eh? <laughs> there we go. Some pie pieces. I just trim the insides uh, with a Stanley knife. Yeah, I know, health and safety hazard and all that, but again, it works, so, yeah. Uh, these are all different sized pieces because I actually cut them with a handsaw. These should be pretty much 11 and a half, 12 degrees each. Whether or not, I don't know. Because <laughs> that thing's not exactly the most accurate. So, yeah. Um, I'm actually going to use this as a practice piece, so I'm going to tack a few here uh, and I'm going to set up the TIG. I'm actually going to um, change the heat in that. I normally use like a 2.4mm... Um, oh yeah, 2.4mm tungsten, 2% lanthanated. It's a WP27 torch. Uh, it's quite big, but you know, uh, maybe I put the stubby on the back. I'm going to I use a gas lens in this one, but I might change it up a little bit and try a different lens. I might actually try a 1.6mm uh, tungsten as well, uh, just to see. And I've got the switch there, however, I use a foot pedal. Um, but I'll probably set it to around about sort of 75, 80 amps, um, and uh, see where we go from there. Give it having a clean down with acetone, and uh, yeah, dab away. It'd be good if I could get like a little lens, like an extra lens or an extra helmet or something like that to um, you know, show you guys what I'm doing. Oh, look at that. See that gas lens? That could get the fuck. That's absolutely useless. So, um, yeah. I'll come up with something. See what I like best. Try a couple different setups and see what I'm most comfortable with. First torch. Pish. The Pyrex cup smashed into a million pieces. I just cannot get this thing. Like, too little gas, too much gas, too much AC balance, one way or another. Oh, don't know. I think I'm just gonna go back and try one of the older styles. So, back to the old school sort of type with no gas lens. First time. Come on, focus, you bastard. It's laying in all right sort of beat, so. I'll set up a wee bit more with this, see what we get on with it. I'll try gas lens again just for the crack. Yeah, this combination is working best for me. It's a 1.6 mil, which is smaller than you normally use. 2% uh, lanthanated on the gas lens size, I think it's a size 10 cup. Uh, and yeah, it's tacking nicely and hopefully we can lay some beads. Right guys, so well, the most part of that, it seems to tack up quite nicely, the welder seems to be set up alright now, it's behaving itself, it's not fluctuating between 245 again, um, and yeah, so this is where I'm at just now, as you can see I've done three different types of bends, this is a nice tight one, that's slightly sort of looser, and this is the loosest, um, might have to use a nice tight one for, you know, uh, the actual throttle body because it's not a lot of room, uh, but taking that onto the base is going to be a bit of a nightmare, so probably end up being something like that one. However, that might come in handy at a later date. We'll see. Uh, I don't mind sort of tacking off, but like, it's, it's nice to have a couple of options, you know, um, different sizes and stuff like that. It makes things a little bit, um, what's the word? Just gives yourself more options, really. More options than what you can do, so. Hey right, guys, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld these up. <laughs> Fucking shit myself. Hey babe. You in your pajamas? <laughs> Showing some of that ankles. <laughs> hey. Eight months pregnant, eh? It's gonna be not gonna be long, but uh, yeah. So, right guys, I'm gonna get on. I'm gonna weld these up, and uh, we're gonna see what we're gonna look like on the actual intercooler itself. <laughs> Hold it towards me a bit, you know how it's rocking? Yeah, but I'm scared I'm going to get burnt. You be yeah, you have gloves. No, you won't get burnt, honestly. Why are you wearing gloves? <laughs> <laughs> 
let's get us turned in. How's it going, guys? Don't know if you can hear me over that uh, pig welder, but uh, we're getting somewhere now. I don't even know if this camera will be able to zoom in. Come on, focus your best. There's some of them, so that's looking no bad so far. The other end will be pretty similar. Yeah, but I've not started welding that one yet, I've just tacked it in place. Whew. Right the way around. Hi, I actually welded this one all the way around this time. <laughs> I'm like a radiator, but yeah, so that one's pretty much done. I say weld it up. Uh, now I need to drill holes in there. I'm probably, I've not got a hole so big enough, so I'll probably do loads of little holes in a circle. Chap it all out, grind it up with dye. And uh, weld them beasts on. Uh, that's now welded up nicely. There's now a big hole in the side of it, so that is now going to be held there by the silicon joiner. Oh, nice and neat and looking awesome. But when I was bead rolling the end of it, with an injury, she snapped. So I'm going to have to make another one of them. Hopefully, maybe actually, I could maybe make, that's M6. If I make one out of an M8, it'll be thicker, more strength, and I might knurl that as well, just to get better grip. Get for I'm saying like. So that one on there, nice and shiny. Well, they're on there bad. There's some checkered plate in there just to show how little I care about this. <laughs> uh, this here, I've just drilled heaps around there. And basically now I use a bigger drill bit just to go in between. Yes guys, would you look at that? Oh, she's all together now. Everything welded up, everything on. Nice and uh, neat, if I don't see so myself. So yeah, I'm happy with that. So next step from here is basically I need to finish off the wire in the front of the car. Um, and work on the downpipe. That's going to be a bit of a nightmare to be honest. Uh, that's really tight to get down there and same with the wastegate placement as well. I'm thinking about plumbing it back in again because I'm a bit old for screamer pipes. I know a lot of folk are going to be like, what? But, I don't know, something about a nice quiet powerful car that kind of gets me like so. Yeah, that's the plans for it anyway and uh, oh yeah I need to get the pipe for the radiator leak as well. There's like a pipe at the U-bend for the oil cooler. Um, that's burst, so I'll get another in uh, somewhere. I might just go to the scrappies and see if I can find something in there. But anyway guys, thanks again for watching. I know it's not exactly exciting or anything like that, but these bits, these just take the longest and they're just little niggly, pishy bits that need to be done. Everything needs to be done for it in order for it to work. And it's just a case of taking things, just one thing at a time. Uh, and I've lost enthusiasm for this thing a long time ago, but as long as you keep on driving, uh, and I'm sure the end result will be worth it. Right guys, much appreciated for all your support, your comments, your likes, your subscriptions. Uh, I love you all, and uh, I hope you have a nice night. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to stop yapping. I'm sure this video is long enough, so yeah guys, we'll catch you in the next vid. Cheers guys.